Mason. I'm a holistic nutritionist and I am truly obsessed with helping women show up for their brightest lives. I am all about empowering you to stop fighting the war with your body and instead find ways to love your body, find joy in honoring and nourishing it. I've got so many videos on this channel that help you do just that. So if you want more of that, make sure you subscribe below and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss when I publish new videos. Today, Today, we are finally doing a video that you guys have asked for for a very long time. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and share with you every detail you need to know about my weekly meal planning, grocery shopping, meal prepping process. I've learned a lot of hacks over the years and I've kind of found a rhythm that's really working for us right now. We're just gonna go vlog style through this. I'm just gonna walk you through my process. All right, look, I feel like I need to start with a disclaimer that Oftentimes I find there's two intense camps when it comes to the idea of meal planning or meal prepping. There's the bro science side where you spend all day Sunday cooking up a storm, portioning out all of your meals into Tupperwares and then reheating for every meal. That is not at all what we're doing here. That brings me zero joy. But there's also the other camp where we have intense resistance to the idea of meal planning. And I've done this before too, where I'm just like, oh, we don't need a plan. And I just rock up to the grocery store. I just buy what sounds good. I think, oh, we'll figure it out. And then when I do that, I find myself not eating proper meals. I just snack all day long because I'm too lazy to figure out how to put together a proper meal. I spend the end of a long work day feeling super flustered over figuring out what to eat because I don't have a plan and decision fatigue is real. I also find when I do that, I waste so much more food. This approach I'm sharing with you is honestly, after just a few years of trying to find an in-between that works for us, this is about still eating intuitively, setting myself up for success, saving time during the week, being efficient, not wasting food, making healthy choices during the week as easy as possible, but still having some freedom to eat what sounds good and to enjoy the process of cooking. So whether you are a meal prep fanatic or you are someone who is super resistant to the idea, hang with me here as I share my system with you. I think you might be surprised at how well this works. My system starts with one of these. Because I'm picky, I created my own template for myself. I have shared this with you in a free download so you can print this off for yourself as well. I have multiple different templates in the download depending on what day of the week you do your meal planning and whether or not you like to plan out all of your meals and snacks or just your dinners. But I always start by assessing what do we already have on hand. Normally this is a part of our Saturday, but for the purpose of filming this video for you guys, I'm doing it here on a Thursday. So my fridge has a little more food in it than normally it would on a Saturday, but let's check it out. So let's see here. If you guys have watched any of my what I eat in a days, you've kind of already gotten a sneak peek into how I organize my fridge and what this often looks like. Of course, we've got our gut shots over here. Right now we've got berries and dates, yogurt. I always have hard boiled eggs on hand. This is actually some leftover bacon that we had cooked. A lot of eggs right now because I bought some at Costco and then also ended up buying some from a local farm. Last week I went to Trader Joe's and I bought this orange juice and I hated it so much that I actually went out of my way to buy Y'all know my favorite one from Whole Foods. And then I also have extra milk on hand right now because for the first time I bought raw milk from the local farm. Of course, y'all know my gummies. I always keep avocados over here. Now, normally this section is where I keep like the meats that we have to cook for the week or our foods that are already prepped. And now we kind of happen to have a lot because we made a chicken pot pie that we have leftovers for. We made the Mexican stir fry that we have leftovers for. This is my chicken that I prepped on Sunday for my weekly lunches. This is some leftover ground beef from some taco bowls we did. Now this is my cheese tub. <laughs> I always like to keep some cheeses on hand for hosting, like for doing charcuterie boards and stuff. Right now I've got a cheddar block and then I always have Pecorino Romano and Parmesan cheese on hand. These ones I typically get at Costco. This is often like my meat sections. I've got some turkey breast and some charcuterie meat. Y'all saw this in the last vlog and then arugula. And then of course, we know raw carrots. Always got some veggies. Bell peppers are almost always here because we do our Mexican stir fry basically every week. Love having cucumbers with my lunches. All right, now our freezer is also a little chaotic at the moment. We had a additional deep freezer in our garage that just went kaputs a couple weeks ago. So normally I have a bunch of like extras stocked out there that are right now being thrown in here. And <laughs> I kind of hate it because it feels crowded and I, it's harder to see what's in here. I've got a thing of ground beef. 
I've got two things of chicken breast. I do have an extra loaf of my bread when this one goes out. And we're also pretty stocked on like frozen fruit and veggies as well. After I take inventory, I will come and write down whatever we already have stocked. My biggest priority here is anything that's in the fridge that's going to go bad soon to make sure that I utilize that. But it also helps me to just write down what we have on hand, even frozen things, just acknowledging I'm covered on eggs, I've got milk, cheese, bread, things that I won't need to buy. And then the next thing is writing down anything that we have going on during the week. Y'all already know Wednesday nights we lead a marriage class. It means we have a very short window of time between when Kadri gets home from work to when we have to leave. So I always make sure that Wednesday nights I'm planning something super simple. Normally it's leftovers. So our go-to for this, honestly, for like weeks on end, and it's fine because we're not sick of it. We make our Mexican stir fry dish on Mondays and that makes enough for a double batch to where we will have leftovers that we can just pop on a pan, heat up real fast and have those again on Wednesday. Now Friday night has been pizza movie night for us for honestly years. Unless we have something scheduled for a Friday, that is just our go-to. I actually order the Simple Mills pizza crust and subscribe and save from Amazon. So that's always already stocked in our pantry. So we are covered on the cheese front, but I do need to pick up some arugula and prosciutto. We try to make a point of doing Thursday as our date night. Sometimes we will do at-home date nights. When we do that, I try to pick like a fun new recipe. We really make like an event out of cooking a new recipe together. But of course, sometimes we like to go out, maybe try something new, more than likely go to the same Mexican place we go to basically every week. <laughs> Now also weekends. I actually don't plan anything for our weekends. So we always have pizza leftovers that are almost always had on Saturday. Saturdays are typically chaotic days of us like cleaning the house and running errands. Sometimes we'll like get Chipotle out. Sundays we do a big Sabbath breakfast after church. We'll come home and we'll just like really enjoy doing a big brunch breakfast together. But I don't really plan for that either. We always have eggs on hand. Sometimes we do breakfast burritos. A lot of times we'll do bagels and cream cheese. So I do know that I have frozen bagels in the freezer. Sometimes we'll run to Whole Foods together after church to get something fun for that if we wanna try something new, but I don't plan that. So honestly, when I'm meal planning, meal prepping, grocery shopping, I'm really just making sure that I have all of our staples stocked on hand and I'm planning our meals for the week. Now lunches, I also like to keep as simple as possible. Kashmir works in an office out of the house, so we do have to prep food for him. I used to send him to work with leftovers a lot for lunch, but we actually have for a couple of months now. He, for whatever reason, has been more than happy having the same thing every day. We buy him a salad kit from Costco. We prep him some meat, either ground turkey or ground beef. I also send him to work with 15 hard boiled eggs. He has those every day. Kind of has some snacks accessible to him at work. He also has his protein at work. But for him, we just keep it super simple, which means if we're not doing leftovers for dinner, like we are this week, we'll, we'll do Monday and Wednesday the same meal. I like to do leftovers from myself so honestly I kind of alternate between actually like writing out my meals for the week for lunches and then some weeks not necessarily planning it but just having an idea of what I'm gonna make sure I have on hand typically you guys have seen if you watch my what I eat in a days typically lunches are either leftovers or I either do my version of a chicken salad sandwich or I'll do my version of a chicken taco for me my priority for lunch is making sure that I have protein ready I do have that luxury working from home of getting getting the time and space to cook something up in my kitchen. But I absolutely positively know, even though I could cook anything from scratch, I'm not going to eat lunch unless I have something mostly ready to throw together. I'm really bad about that. I know that I have to have something on hand. So I honestly like to just keep it simple by prepping shredded chicken breast and then letting myself kind of decide any day whether I want to turn that into a chicken salad sandwich or a taco or I want to throw it on some rice. Like, I, you know, it kind of just gives me options, but I'm really focused on making sure I have meal components prepped. I have some go-tos. They're easy. They're satisfying. They're delicious. I actually look forward to them. That's a huge deal for me. Having something that I am excited to eat, that I look forward to, that's easy to throw together, that helps me so much when it comes to actually eating meals. It is really easy for me if I'm working from home all day to just not make lunch and snack all day. And that is not at all good for my hormones, my blood sugar. I'm trying to not do that. So it blesses me a lot to just have some go-tos, just 
keep it simple. Now again, you guys probably also know at this point that I keep breakfast pretty simple as well. I almost always just do scrambled eggs and fruit. Lately, I have been trying out fried eggs with a piece of toast. Recently, with the weather heating up, I found myself really craving smoothies and smoothie bowls, and I've tried that for breakfast, and it's just like not working for me. So I don't even write my breakfast down here because I just don't need it. I know what I want. Some days I'll switch it up, but I know it's eggs. It's focus on protein. Now for snacks, I have found what's been working best for me lately, instead of trying to like perfectly plan it out what I'm gonna have each day, I just keep a list over here of the snack options that I wanna make sure I have on hand. And then when it's time for a snack, I'll come down, the list will kind of trigger like what my options are. I'll decide what sounds good, what my body's craving at that point, and then I'll pull from whatever I have on hand. For snacks, I just make sure I'm getting a balance of protein and carbs. I try to get 10 grams of protein with every snack and then at least 20 grams of protein with every meal. I really try to focus on eating mostly whole food based ingredients, bioavailable proteins, vitamins, minerals, nutrients, things that are good on my digestion. And honestly, I'm also just really focused on what tastes good, what is appealing to me, what is satisfying to me. I cannot tell you how much that changed my life when I stopped just trying to eat what I thought I was supposed to eat, what was healthiest. And I actually just focused on like what sounds good to me, what is satisfying to me, what feels and tastes good, what leaves me feeling great when I finish a meal. It changes everything when you actually like look forward to what you're gonna eat. So after I've laid out our dinners or our recipes for the week, I will compare the ingredients I know I need for that with what I know I have on hand. And over here in the add it to the list section, I will write down anything I know that I need to grab from the grocery store. And then I also just keep a pulse on my staple. So maybe it's not actually in our dinner recipe, but I always have raw carrots on hand. Of course, I always have eggs, cheese, milk, orange juice, lots of fruit. I always keep some version of berries on hand, especially for my yogurt bowls, but then I'll often just try to buy whatever fruit is in season, whatever's looking good. A lot of times I end up going to two grocery stores every week. I almost always go to Costco because there's just certain things that I have a hard time buying anywhere other than Costco because I like to buy it in bulk. It's a lot cheaper for us to buy in larger quantities. But then I also can never seem to get everything that I need for the week at Costco because for example, like if I need onions or something, like I'm not gonna buy like 20 pound bag of onions from Costco. I'm realizing I think I have everything that I need from Costco. I'm stocked on my lemons. I'm good on eggs, which normally is something I buy in bulk at Costco. And then carrots. I really like to buy this big bag of carrots, but this typically lasts us two weeks. And I can tell, you know, we've got enough to last us another week. So my hard cheeses that I always buy at Costco, I'm good on those. Avocados I always get at Costco, I'm good on those. So I think I got lucky this week. I think we're gonna be able to get away with not going to Costco and just going to one grocery store. Honestly, it depends what I need, which store I go to. Typically, it's almost always Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Y'all already know. There are a lot of things that I love to buy specifically from Trader Joe's, but I feel like their produce is not the best. Obviously, I like my orange juice from Whole Foods. There's just a lot of things that Whole Foods has a lot more options on that I just prefer to buy from Whole Foods. I will pay. I'll pay a little extra to get really high quality. But I think based off what we need, I think we can do a Trader Joe's trip today. One of my other favorite hacks here, I always have this shared note in my notes folder with, I share it with cashmere. I always have a running list for the different stores that we go to. So as you can see, like Costco, these are kind of a lot of the staples that I get frequently. Whenever I know that I run out of something or I need something, like for example, we're almost out of the box bone broth, I will uncheck it and it will bounce to the top and then I'll already know that that's something that I need to get at Costco. Now, if I was going to Costco today, I would come here and just like uncheck, oh, I need lemons, I need bell peppers, whatever, I'm not, so we're gonna go right on down to Trader Joe's. As you can see, I already have a couple things here that I've listed here that I've run out of that I know I need from Trader Joe's. But now I'm just gonna go in and add what is on my list. Honestly, it helps so much. So let's go do that together. I will take y'all grocery shopping with me and then we will come home and I will show you what I do to actually prep for the week. Also a super important part, so let's go. Let's go to Trader Joe's.
still have a dedicated spot in your freezer for these magical little things. What are you doing? for the prep and let me tell you this is not your average meal prep we are not gonna be making any recipes any meals here this is about me just getting some things cooked some things chopped some things prepped just so that I have easy to reach for ingredients I feel like my prep has basically been the same list of things that I've been doing like Saturday after Saturday after Saturday lately five things we're gonna prep five things right now <laughs> All right, first thing up here, we're gonna hard boil some eggs. This is one of the reasons I told you guys in my Costco video that even though these are not pasture raised, I end up buying these from Costco a lot because we go through so many eggs. So I make 15 specifically for cashmere. He has five days in the office, he eats three eggs every day. Even though I do scrambled eggs in the morning, I do like to have hard boiled eggs always on hand just for like an easy protein source, quick snack. So I typically end up making about 20 hard boiled eggs to have for the week, 15 for cashmere in the office, and then five to have at home. I have actually had multiple of you comment on my kitchen essentials video telling me that you use your instant pot to do hard boiled eggs. I've never tried that, I might have to try that. While we wait for that to boil, I'm all also gonna tackle this turkey. This is specifically for cashmere's lunches. If I get the turkey packs from Costco, they're one and a half pounds, and that's what I send him with for the whole week. At Trader Joe's, they only had one pound, so I just bought two and figured I'll leave a little bit extra at home, and then maybe I'll do something for one of my lunches with ground turkey. While those cook, we're gonna go some major multitasking here and I'm going to make my gummies. Today, I'm gonna try this mango juice that I saw at Trader Joe's. Normally, I do two cups of juice and these little canned ones, it's eight and a half fluid ounces per can, so I'm just gonna do two cans. Probably a little bit of honey and some gelatin. I'll show you how I make those. I'm gonna get out the other caraway pot. <laughs> use this gelatin from further food and the secret is spreading it out as evenly as you can and then you have to let it bloom I'll show you how crazy this looks but it's part of the process in my Whole Foods haul when I told you guys that we go through this stuff like crazy. We will use it for our Mexican stir fry. Cashmere uses it in his lunch meat. It's, it's the only taco seasoning I will use. Now the turkey is cooked, it's just cooling, and I will show you guys that is a bloom gelatin. Doesn't it look like a brain? That's when you know it did what it was supposed to. So now, after I've mixed that, I will put this on a hot burner. I'm gonna put it on low, but since it was already warm, it's gonna be fine. And then I will just mix this in. I know it looks kind of like applesauce right now. It looks like clumpy and weird. So all you wanna do is heat it up enough to get it like liquidy and smooth. This is also when I add the honey, if I wanna add any honey. See how it's already getting smooth. I'm just gonna add two tablespoons of local honey. I've got these fun little molds from Amazon. I like to put it on a tray just so it stays flat when I transfer it to the fridge. And then I also like to pour the juice in here. I just find with this spout, it's a lot easier to pour than directly out of the pan.
eggs are cooling and it is time to cook the chicken. This is always one of my main priorities is to prep cooked shredded chicken in the fridge. I'm doing extra because I'm actually cooking some for the enchiladas that we'll have on Tuesday so that on Tuesday I can just assemble the enchiladas and bake them. I won't have to cook the chicken ahead of time. And then I'm also doing some just to have in the fridge for the week for my own lunches. After the eggs have done their ice bath, I will just dry them off. And I actually put 15 back in this per cashmere and I like literally send this with him to work. He puts it in there, you know, break room fridge and he peels them himself. It just makes it easy. And then I always put some in a bowl for us to have here in our fridge. chicken cooks one of the other things I like to do is chop fruit and sometimes veggies depending on what we're having during the week but this is an example of one of those things like this is just about prepping ingredients making them easy to reach for I like to have fruit with most of my meals during my snack so just having something already ready cut up in the fridge makes a huge difference I just got this melon I feel like I might need to give this a few days to ripen but this pineapple I got a few days back now at Costco, and I think it's finally ready to chop. One of my culinary professors taught me that if you pull on a pineapple and the frond comes right off, that means it's ripe. So that one just popped right out. Good sign. cooled enough now and this is where I show you guys the real truth reality behind things I tell you all the time you got to think good better best sometimes you just got to do what you got to do I love my husband I love my husband he's amazing one thing he's not so great at is remembering to bring Tupperware home from work I used to send him with all of our glass Tupperwares and he would forget them and then I wouldn't have enough and I'd be waiting on them and then they'd be sitting and getting moldy and I just, it just doesn't work. So I use Ziploc bags. It's just really easy to put five Ziploc bags of meat together. He heats it up at work. It is what it is. Okay, the chicken is seriously nothing exciting. I literally just cook it in some bone broth. I don't even really season it or anything, but I like to do that so that I can do whatever I want with it and dress it up when I actually assemble it into our meals. I find it is way easier to shred after it's cool, so I normally just pop it out, let it cool. So many dishes. <laughs>
weekly meal planning. Putting a little bit of effort into the planning and the shopping and the prepping, it really goes a long way when it comes to actually just helping me nourish my body with ease during the week. I have totally gotten in ruts before where the idea of having to grocery shop and plan our meals has like genuinely caused me great stress. I don't want it to be that way. I don't want it to be that way for you. Approaching this stuff with this system has really helped alleviate that stress. So instead of feeling overwhelmed and burdened by it, I get to just choose to be excited about it. I'll know I'm all about renewing our minds and just refreshing the thoughts that we have around things and the way that we approach things and when it comes to planning for shopping and cooking meals it has really helped me to try to renew my mind and just come at this from a space of gratitude remembering i am so fortunate to have the opportunity to cook whatever I want to, to go to the grocery store, to afford groceries, to have the luxury of being able to fuel my body with things that feel good. Food can be and should be a joy and a gift. So just find what works for you. Don't be afraid to repeat meals. Don't be afraid to have the same thing every week. Whatever it is that you enjoy, whatever it is that's gonna work for you and your schedule and your life and your family, just focus on nourishing that body. I really do hope that you found this helpful. If you enjoyed this video, I would love a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for more. I do have so much more encouragement here on this channel. Of course, if you want my meal planning made easy guide, you can download that for free to get the template that I use. And if you haven't watched my what I eat in a day videos, I think you'll find those super helpful just to show you how I actually implement these things into my days. I'll link those for you right here. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.